Hello everyone and welcome back to my let's play of Sherlock Holmes Crimes of Punishment. And I I really want to finish this game. I, I really do because... Um, oh, what's... What's going on? What's up with you, lad? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my brother to be released. Your brother? The one that you caught. Beat up and imprisoned. Ah, the murderer. He ain't killed no one, copper. Watch your mouth, lad, else you'll be joining that worthless brother of yours. Hmm. But yeah, I really want to finish this because um, I think on Tuesday, which for you guys will be um, last Tuesday, I think. Uh, episode 2 of Game of Thrones is going to be released and I think I will be making a let's play of that so I will have to uh, replay episode 1 but then I'll continue that and also last Friday I think or Tuesday something like or uh, Thursday something like that Life is Strange has been released and that uh, I've seen one part of a let's play of it and it actually looks really interesting so uh, I just bought episode 1 I uh, haven't played it yet because I intend to do a let's play of it. But, uh, well, let's talk to Wiggins. Let's see what he is doing Mr. here. Holmes, did you see my brother oh, at Scotland okay. Yard? Okay, and uh, let's do some deductions because I am getting really annoyed. Um, those two connect, apparently. Compelling evidence. Witness testimonies and a crime weapon clearly point to one possible culprit, Leighton Chapman. Well, I'm going to say that's wrong. Double murder? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's not... Uh, that's, that's not going to happen. Wait. Oh, I guess that... Yeah, let's go for simultaneous shots. In that case, there's nobody I can... ...convict. And the the, the symbol is, is gone. Okay. Um, so yeah, we have this guy. And we have this guy. And I wonder who the third person is that we're going to uh, get. Oh yeah, we had to talk to you about the uh, contradicting statements. Mr. Turner, you have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. Well, um... There is a contradiction, because the police officer didn't see you. That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, oh well, I think Constable Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. You understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Turner. Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your Yeah, and wasn't it like... Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow didn't me. Didn't he say he had a lamp? And didn't the uh, constable say that... Um, Mr. Turner appears to live very modestly. That, that the window was dark? So, you know, that he didn't see the person. Uh, that's very possible, of course, if you're distracted. But, you know, seeing like a lamp burning or not especially when it is dark outside that's hard to miss uh, Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots yes the books on this shelf are in a mess it looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago his gun oh Hey. A perfect match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. He did not mention that he was so near to the victims. Hmm. 
very interesting. Um, so what else do we have here? The fireplace. This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. Hmm. Burned paper. Ooh. The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. But you probably have a way to find out what it says. These words. Or the not. papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. Hmm. So, what else do we have? The kitchen table. This kitchen knife is quite sharp. Not sure how that is relevant, but apparently it is because... Can't seem to find. Oh, wait, T. Sweepings. Shredded. Oh. There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. And that's what he threw knife into the. Uh, was used to cut the paper. Very interesting. Okay, uh, let's look out of the window. Let's open it. So, that's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly, and Leighton Chapman standing over them. Hmm. Wait. What do I do? didn't happen this way. Uh, okay, I'm going to say it he it started with uh, breaking the stick. No, it didn't happen this way. Wait, how does this You would think that approaching the body is the first thing. So I can only deactivate it, watch the sequence, and reset the sequence. didn't happen this way. Uh No, it didn't happen. This How way. So, scrolling the mouse doesn't work. Uh, 
Uh, wait, maybe I have to... No, it didn't happen this way. Maybe I actually have to be close. Anything else you would like to know, Mr. Holmes? Yes, I would like to know how your your broken stick got down here, but um This might be Approach the body number one. Pretty sure with the other ones, like okay, let's see. He approached, he took something. How, how did the it was that big okay now I understand so the first thing is obviously he got up from bed uh, place the broken stick don't think so threw something into the fire maybe not I would say that he opened the window and looked down at that point I think he went down, approached the body, grabbed stuff and all that. Uh, he grabbed those papers. Um, I think he placed the broken stick first. Damn it. Oh my god. Do well. I think. I guess I can do it from here. Uh, I think then he placed the stick, cut the papers, threw the papers into the fire. Okay, is that it? So Mr. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? Yes. Okay, let's see. Books. I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take a closer look. That is some pretty good eyesight. Ooh. Well now. What a find! A precious jewel, concealed inside a book. Well, let's a see. with a unique ram's head design. A distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so what do we have? Antique bracelet and the limp. So yeah, I I'm going to assume that he was like shot or something in the Crimean War. Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years such as yourself? to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated. Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. Yeah, no, because you have a limp. 
I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something or someone in Half Moon Street during that time. You're, you're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Oh, time can pull tricks on you. Yeah, so let's uh, see if he can actually and tell what us what happened. Else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Yeah, no. Because we have your... No. Mr. Holmes, I want to say I the do stick, assure you but... that the other things I said were most sincere. And prisoners? No, I don't think the limp. The bracelet, I guess. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then, and not now. But, but, but Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, Please do. Really correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window, but you also noticed a glittering object on the ground, this precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler, and when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Oh, and that is what he was Mr. cutting. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's see. Solve the crime. Possible crossfire. Investigate the ancient bracelet. For now, I'm going to work on the assumption that uh, Chapman actually isn't the uh, murderer. Who knows, it might be him, but... Uh... Uh, okay... Wait. One of the victims possibly fired his gun twice. Find out who by... I would think that this guy had the time to fire twice. Because a gut wound doesn't kill you instantly, but a head wound does. Well, although I guess I could just try to find the bullet. <laughs> a fairly long pole with a forked end. I am unable to see any higher. I need to find something to lift my... Okay, let's take this pole. This should be useful. And now I can examine the wall. Ah, this there is it is. Definitely a bullet hole. The brick cracks are fresh. Watson, 
There was a third shot fired in this street. Where's Watson? Is Watson here? Watson? Where's Watson? <laughs> Where's Watson? Is he here at the... Uh... At Watson? Yes, it is. Hey, Watson. I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Always? That's a bit creepy. Um, so, it was a third shot. Crossfire. Kenneth Butler and Brian Fricotti both died of crossfire, with each of them holding a gun. One of the guns is now missing. Or Kenneth Butler and Brian Fricotti were the victims of double murder. Yeah. It's definitely a crossfire, I think. Oh my god, then everything is wrong. <laughs> Personal motive. Imaginary man. Yeah, I don't think it's an imaginary man. Who knows, it might actually be like the shadow of a person. Because he could only see the silhouette of the person, I think. And the person didn't make any sound to his footsteps. Let's see, Leighton Chapman's statement regarding the jacketed man who disappeared at Half Moon Street is now, now seems reasonable. As the three shots at the crime scene proved the presence of a second gun that is now missing. Reenact Marrow's pursuit with a lamp. Okay, that's uh. So that's nothing. Okay, let's do some uh, some reenacting. Where do I need to do the reenacting? Need to do, to search the archive. Okay. Such a young man, and already a murderer. Shut up, he isn't. So, what do I do? I need to talk to him. Constable Marrow, I would value ah, your yeah. assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Well, run through Take the your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. Understood. Okay, let's see if we can find some place. Oh, I'm playing as... Uh... I guess he could be like behind something. Well, the but I mean like over there. You know, next to the door. So... Is my goal to just walk through this thing and not find Sherlock? Or is it my goal to actually try to find him? <laughs> okay, apparently just walking... No, this is not how I walked at the time of the crime. I was more attentive. Let's start over again. Oh, were you more attentive? Fine. So I actually have to try and find Sherlock. Oh, hey. I can see you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. Although it was a pretty good hiding spot. Here you are, Mr. Holmes. That one was terrible. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. It's on the other side of the street. Or the alley. Uh, no, doesn't look like it. But really, that 
you know, in that alley over there, it was a uh, pretty good. If you don't pay attention, I mean, you you don't really see anything. Oh wait, I do have to pay attention. It's probably like over here somewhere. No. Was it like inside this door? Oh, hey. Mr. Holmes, it wasn't difficult to find you at all. It is obvious now. No one could escape Constable Marrow's lamp while hiding in the street. Well, the, the, the first place was okay. No one could hide in the shadows of Half Moon as a single single run through this narrow street with the lamp would reveal to every corner. Well, I would say that, um, you know, if he was actually running, uh, you know, it it's possible to hide. Up the walls, if we can assume that there was one more person in Half Moon Street at the time of the crime, then there was only, only, there was no way forward or back for his escape. Only up. Let us reenact the action. Recreate the fireworks by Leighton and attempt to climb the wall. Hmm. Find the flare gun and climbing equipment. Uh, where the hell do I find climbing equipment? Do you I suppose I shall have to move my stool now. Apparently you don't sell climbing equipment. Um and where do you find flare guns? Maybe maybe the police. Or do I have it at Baker Street? Who knows? I I I <laughs> you might have it at Baker Street. Didn't he? No, he didn't have harpoons at Baker Street. Okay, Mr. Turner. It was Turner, right? Do you happen to have climbing equipment? Uh, I don't think so. No. And you, sir, have a very shitty house. Where's your kitchen? Oh, over there. I want to say that I live larger than this, but that's probably not true. But hey, I'm I'm a student. It's you know normal to live like that. Um, let's see. Wait, I've already been this. Yo, Wiggins, do you know? I'll do anything to save my brother, Mr. Holmes. It would be my... I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Yes, I know, but uh, you can... start with telling me, right now, where I can get climbing equipment. I am going to guess that it at, it's at Baker Street. And if it's not, well... I need to um, find something in the archive anyway. Wait, what does the help do? Uh, apparently it doesn't really do anything. Ah, Watson, you stopped your whatever it was you're doing. Oh, hey, Toby. Hello, Toby. All you need now is a shawl and a mock cap, and you could be Mrs. Hudson's younger sister. Oh. Well, that's very nice of you, Sherlock. Um. Oh. A letter. 
Sensation, an exotic method of murder. The arsenal of our present day criminals may soon be re refilled with poisonous plants. A young and beautiful woman in collaboration with her colleague at Kew Gardens planned the terrible murder of their director, Mr. Montague Dunn. Only one detective was capable of uncovering the truth behind a tragedy that was initially believed to be a simple heart attack. The detective's name is Sherlock Holmes. Who else? What did I get as a souvenir? Wasn't it one of the plants? Yeah. Okay, uh, but that's not why I came here. Uh, bracelets, antique bracelets. So, um, maybe history, Greek history. That is not the one I need. It's Greek, right? That is not medicine, botany. No, um, research. Chemistry, poisons, wounds, criminalistic, martial arts, marks and symbols. Rot of Asclepius. Okay, newspapers maybe. Uh, Impression on the rise. Hellenist Hellenistic treasure that is stolen. Not the one I need. Flying lobsters. Uh, no. No, don't think so. Okay, uh, it's probably uh, maybe an art. Ah, antique art of the British Museum, of course. Where else do you find, uh, you know, treasures from other countries than in the British Museum? Um, these beautiful antique jewels represent a part of the Hellenistic treasures collection. Depicted are the five heads of the mountain rams upon a bracelet, necklace and ring, each made of pure gold. The five rams of Mytilene have been missing from the museum since 1885. Here it is. I need to continue my research in my archives. Okay. Um... I did see something about the Hellenistic treasures, right? Yeah, here. A treacherous theft. The Hellenistic treasures were stolen yesterday evening while being transported by cab on their way from the British Museum to the Glassford Fine Art Exhibition. Pawn shop owner Kenneth Butler contacted Scotland Yard that night and provided information regarding a gentleman who had attempted to sell him a collection of historical art at his pawn shop in Church Street. Police have since captured the described man, a professional thief by the name of Vincent Foley, who had been in the process of escaping London via the port. He was recognized by the surviving driver of the cab that had transported the collection of Hellenistic treasures. Vincent Foley refused to confess as to where the remainder of the treasures were hidden. He was eventually imprisoned. The lost treasures are still to be found, and I bet he was imprisoned in Westgate yeah, Prison. One of the victims... Kenneth Butler was involved in the story of the stolen Hellenistic treasures. A visit to his pawn shop should tell me more. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's go. We have some other stuff to look at. Uh, no deductions. Oh crap, I wanted to to find the climbing equipment. So we have a door key. Which we can possibly probably use on the um, door to the pawn shop. But that will have to wait till uh, till next time.
because for now I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll speak to you guys in the next episode.